Aloha and welcome to Tweets for Education, a learning object about the educational benefits of microblogging with Twitter by Jean, Liz, and Matt. It is our intent that after viewing this presentation that you'll be able to cite some examples of Twitter use in education and possible ways that you may want to use it for your instruction. We will give some real-world examples of Twitter use as well as demonstrate some of the potential that Twitter has for educational purposes. We hope to get you thinking about how Twitter and other microblogging will enhance your instruction and the community of your class. To start things off, we're going to give a brief explanation of Twitter. Twitter is a form of microblogging, but also includes elements of instant messaging, social networking, and Web 2.0, which make it a fairly new and developing form of communication. It was launched in late 2006 and has gained wide popularity. Like a regular blog, the writer can post anything they choose to write about, their thoughts, what they're doing, or give an opinion on a particular topic. However, with Twitter, you are limited to posts that can only be 140 characters in length, including spaces. That is about the length of one long sentence or two short ones. With this restriction, the writer is very limited as to what they can say, and posts are often brief and to the point, hence the term microblogging. Twitter users have nicknamed these brief 140 character posts and call them tweets. As long as you have a cell phone or computer that connects online, you are ready for Twitter. Now that we've given you some background, we can take a look at what Twitter really does. At its core and from the time you log in, Twitter asks you, what are you doing? It can be as simple as that. What you tweet or post tells everyone what you're doing at that particular moment. Since Twitter is a form of blogging, users have the ability to post whatever they feel like, whenever they feel like it. Maybe you found a really interesting online article about an upcoming blockbuster movie. Go ahead and share it with everyone. Or you could let everyone know how great your journal article research is going. As you can imagine, tweets can range anywhere from insightful to mundane. One of the advantages of Twitter is that you can post tweets from almost anywhere. As long as you have a cell phone, you can post tweets about what you're doing by texting them in to Twitter via SMS messages. If you have a smartphone, you can download special Twitter applications or utilize mobile internet to post updates. What sets Twitter apart from regular blogging, though, is the ability to follow other Twitter users. Following someone means that you subscribe to another person's posts, similar to friending someone on Facebook. As the person you're following updates and posts more tweets, those appear along with your own posts on your homepage, and you can see what that other person is doing. On the flip side, people can follow you to see what you're doing. These people are your followers. It is this follow and to be followed relationship that builds conversation between people. You can address comments to certain people or answer a question that someone you are following poses. After a while, you may find yourself deeply involved in a conversation between several people and several messages long. Just to give you an idea of who's using Twitter, there are about 6 million people using the service since the beginning of 2009. That may be a small number compared to other services like MySpace and Facebook, but Twitter has seen an explosion in user numbers since it was started a little over two years ago. As you can see from the statistics we found, it's close to an even split between males and females who use the service. But what is interesting is that the majority of users are over the age of 17. When you think about social network trends like MySpace and Facebook, those communities are dominated by younger users. This is not the case for Twitter, as about half of its users are 35 and older. Now for the good stuff. Why should I use Twitter? What can it do for me? Well, for starters, it can engage students in a medium they are already familiar with through social networking and the internet. Even though statistics show that the majority of users are over 17, the service is rapidly catching on and may gain popularity with younger users. Also, students can be learners of all ages, and so for adult learners, this could be a viable method of communication. With Twitter, users frequently monitor their Twitter stream. Your Twitter stream is the continuous list of posts generated by yourself and the people you are following. Should a student make a comment or have a question about something class-related while they are out and about, you or any other student will be able to answer back immediately. If other students are following, they may also benefit from this exchange of information. 
This can help build a sense of community among your students even outside the classroom. As you may have gathered, a lot of tweets are generated away from the computer. That's another benefit of using Twitter. You can post updates using mobile technology. Metacognition is another benefit with Twitter. Metacognition is the practice of thinking about what you've learned. Thinking about what you've learned outside of the learning environment helps learners to understand and better retain content. When students are able to tweet about what they're learning, they are not only thinking about these topics and concepts, but it also gives them understanding that extends outside the classroom. These are some of the broad benefits of using Twitter in education. Next, we'll go over more specific examples and uses.